Can you tell me about the nuclear football, as it's called? I think Americans are familiar with the football, at least anyone who sort of, you know, follows national security concepts, because it's a satchel. It's a leather satchel that is always with a military aid in Secret Service nomenclature. That's the mill aid. And he's trailing around the president 24-7, 365 days a year, and also the vice president, by the way, with the ability to launch nuclear war in that six-minute window all the time, okay? Um, that is also called the football. And it's always with the president. To report this part of the book, I interviewed a lot of people in the Secret Service that are with the president and talk about this. And the director of the Secret Service, a guy called Lou Merletti, told me a, a story that I just really found fascinating. Um, he was also in charge of the president's detail, President Clinton this was, um, before he was director of the Secret Service. And he told me the story about how, he said, the football is with the president at all times, period, okay? They were traveling to Syria, and Clinton was meeting with President Assad. And they got into an elevator, uh, Clinton and his Secret Service team, and one of Assad's guys was like, no, you know, like about the mill aid. Mm -hmm. And Lou said it was like a standoff because there was no way they were not going to have the president with his football in an elevator, and it kind of sums up, for me anyways, you you realize what goes into every single one of these decisions. You realize the massive system of systems behind every item you might just see in, in passing and glancing on the news as you see the mill aid carrying that satchel. Well, what's in that satchel? I really dug into that to report this book. What is in that side? Okay, so, <laughs> well, okay, first of all, that is, you know, people are saying, it's incredibly classified. I mean, people talk about UFOs. It's incredibly, I mean, come on, guys. That is nothing burger, right? Mm -hmm. You want to know what's really classified, what's in that football, right? Mm -hmm. What's in that satchel? But the PED, Presidential Emergency Action Directives, right? Mm -hmm. Those have never been leaked. No one knows what they are. What we do know from one of the mill aides who spoke on the record, a guy called Buzz Patterson, he describes the president's orders, right? So if a nuclear war has begun, if the president has been told there are nuclear missiles, one or more coming at the United States, you have to launch in a counterattack, right? The red clock is ticking. You have to get the blue in impact clock ticking. Um, he needs to look at this list to decide what targets to strike and what weapon systems to use. And that is what is on, according to Buzz Patterson, a piece of like sort of laminated plastic. He described it like a Denny's menu. Mm -hmm. And from that menu, the president chooses targets and chooses weapon systems. And it's probably super old school, like all... Uh, top secret systems are because they have to be tested over and over and over and over and over. It's yes, and it's non-digital. Non-digital. It might literally be a Denny's menu from hell. Right? And there's a, meanwhile, I learned this only in reporting the book. Um, there is a identical black book inside the Stratcom bunker in Nebraska. Okay, so let me, three command bunkers are involved when, when nuclear war begins, right? There's the bunker beneath the Pentagon, which is called the National Military Command Center, okay? Mm -hmm. Then there is the bunker beneath Cheyenne Mountain, which everyone has, you know, or many people have heard of because it's been made famous in movies, right? That is a very real bunker. And then there is a third bunker, which people are not so familiar with, which is the bunker beneath Strategic Command in Nebraska, and so it's described to me this way. The Pentagon bunker is the beating heart. The Cheyenne Mountain bunker is the brains. And the Stratcom bunker is the muscle. Mm -hmm. The Stratcom commander will receive word from the president, launch orders, and then directs the 150,000 people beneath him what to do. Okay, from the bunker in Strat beneath Stratcom. That's before 
he run, you know, he, he gets the orders, then he has to run out of the building and jump onto a what's called the doomsday plane. We'll get into that in a minute. Let me just finish the, I mean, but again, no, this is good. The, uh, right. these okay. are the details. This is like, these are the systematic, sequential details that happen in seconds and minutes. And reporting them, I never cease to be amazed by what a, system it is you know a a follows b you know just it's just numerical right yeah but as we discuss this procedure each individual person that follows that procedure might lose the big picture of the whole thing i and, mean especially when you realize what what is happening yeah that almost out of fear you just follow the steps yeah or okay so imagine this imagine being the president you got that six minute when you have to, you're looking at your list of strike options. Mm -hmm. You're being briefed by your chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and your SEC staff. And this other really spooky detail. In the STRATCOM bunker, in addition to the nuclear strike advisor who can answer very specific questions, if the president's like, wait a minute, why are we striking that, not that? There's also a weather officer. And this is the kind of human detail that kept me up at night because that weather officer is in charge of explaining to the president really fast how many people are going to die and how many people are going to die in minutes, weeks, months, and years from radiation fallout. Because a lot of that has to do with the weather system. Yes. Yes. And so these kinds of the humanness, you know, balanced out with the mechanization of it all mm -hmm. is, it's just really grotesque. So the uh, doomsday plane from Stratcom, yeah. what's that? Where is it going? It's on <laughs> right. it. It's, it's it, Okay, ready? Yeah. It's going to fly in circles. Mm -hmm. That's where it's going. It's flying in circles around the United States of America so that nuclear weapons can be launched from the air after the ground systems are taken out by the incoming ICBMs or the incoming submarine-launched ballistic missiles. This has been in play since the 50s. This is these these are the contingency plans for when nuclear war happens. So again, going back to this absurd paradox, nuclear war will never happen. You know, mutual assured destruction, that is why deterrence will hold. Well, I found a talk that the deputy director of Stratcom gave to a very close-knit group where he said, "Yes, deterrence will hold, but if it fails, everything unravels." And think about that word, unravels, right? And the unraveling is, you know, the doomsday plane launches. The STRATCOM commander jumps in. He's in that plane. He's flying around the United States. And uh, he's making decisions because the Pentagon's been taken out. At 9-11, by the way, Bush was in the doomsday plane. And uh, Bush had to make decisions quickly, but not so quickly, not as quickly as he would have needed to have done if there's a nuclear launch. I mean- Six minutes. It basically happens in three acts. There's mm -hmm. the first 24 minutes, the next 24 minutes, and the last 24 minutes. And that is the reality of nuclear weapons. 